r slash malicious compliance delhi counter malicious compliance won't let me close a bank account no problem not me but my spouse's grandmother frankie after my spouse's grandfather bill died suddenly of a heart attack my spouse's grandmother frankie was understandably devastated but went about closing his estate with a stiff upper lip until she got to one bank account that was only in bill's name not a joint account with both of them Despite having the death certificate, will, and other documentation required, the bank absolutely would not let Frankie close Bill's account. But for whatever reason, they would allow her to withdraw money. Being the type to not suffer fools, Frankie withdrew all but one cent from the account. The next day, she got a call from the bank's branch manager explaining there were minimum balance requirements, and the bank account would be subject to a service fee if it didn't have a certain amount of money in it at the end of each month. No problem. Frankie tells the manager, just let me close the account. We can't let you close an account in someone else's name, the manager says. At this point, Frankie realizes that it doesn't affect her if a bank account in someone else's name goes negative because of service fees. The manager won't budge and neither will she, so the next month, the account goes negative after the bank assesses a $2 service fee. That was 17 years ago. The bank still calls her from time to time to ask her to bring the account back into the black, but when she asks about closing the account and they tell her only Bill can close it, she promptly hangs up on them and goes back to playing bridge with her friends. Surely by their own logic it would have to be up to Bill to get the account back in the black. Maybe she can tell them where he's buried and they can visit him and ask him to settle up. A sentence I saw on another post that would fit the situation. Okay, I'll get a shovel. I read that one too. Brilliant. She really shouldn't even be getting calls from creditors either. In some places, it's illegal. All she would have to say is, he doesn't live here anymore. She's already told them he doesn't live at all and they still won't let her close the account. Remember another post where a survivor scheduled a meeting at the bank then plopped the account holder's ashes onto the manager's desk? If she's in the USA, they are not allowed to call her and even tell her that Bill has a debt. That violates debtor's privacy. No debt collection person is allowed to tell anyone other than the person with the debt, that a debt even exists. She needs to get a call recording app, record the calls and tell them she's recording it, and once they say, I'm calling about Bill's debt, she can just laugh and laugh. When they ask her why, she can inform them they just broke federal law and were recorded doing it, and can expect a call from the FTC and better get a good lawyer. Bet they never call her again after that. I'm calling about Bill's debt, so why are you calling me? Tell him. That, and, I'm not Bill, you just broke federal law. Bye bye even if you were Bill, unless they verify they are speaking to you first, they are breaking federal law. After they tell you they are calling about Bill's debt, just be like. Dude, Bill is in the bathroom, I'm Frank, I just answering because he said he was expecting an important call. Because they can't prove you're not Frank, and they still broke the law LMAO. My father kept getting credit card payment demands for my grandfather, for months after he died. Of course, my dad had sent them multiple copies of the death certificate etc. but the notices kept coming. Dad finally lost his patience and sent them a forwarding address to the cemetery my grandfather was buried. He included the plot number and all. He's never heard from them again. Meadow Grove Cemetery, plot 207, 6 feet down. For real. I'm picturing a headstone with a mail slot. I got a bill from a credit card company for my mom last week, she died of cancer 8 years ago. They are threatening litigation for non-payment for a credit card I tried to close right after she died. They had to find me because I bought a house 5 years ago and my dad sold the house he owned with my mother, they had to investigate to find me. I'm just waiting on them to call me so I can tell them where to send the subpoenas. They use scare tactics, as long as you never pay, you don't assume the debt. As long as you never pay, which is why they go through a lot of effort to get you to make just one payment, so they can claim that you have assumed the debt. You never inherit debt unless you're a cosigner or a spouse, some states in US, not sure in other parts of the world. Payment or not. They don't care. They want to scare you into making a payment so they can bully you into making the rest. They will threaten, harass, and cajole you as much as they can. This, my good friend I worked with used me as a reference, nothing more than a reference mind you when she bought a new car. Fast forward about 6 months or so and I'm getting calls and emails from dealership about her debt. First one was a voicemail, 
once I heard it I called her and told her that I'm getting calls about you falling behind on car payments. She was shocked. I called the person from the dealership and asked if he understood what a reference was, and told him in no uncertain terms I do not want to ever hear your voice, or anyone's voice from your company ever again unless somehow I lose my mind and decided say to buy one of your shitty cars. Granted it was excessive, and Hondas aren't shitty but I wanted to make sure I never hear back. And I damn well didn't. Have to fight fire with fire sometimes, and I felt justified in that the voicemail that was left for me about her debt was very aggressive and after asking for me to contact her, it was suggested that they'd come after me financially for her woes. Actually now that I think about it I won't ever buy a Honda on principle alone after that. Lol when my aunt passed away years ago I wanted to just take over the payment on her Mazda Tribute SUV but I was only 19 and they said no because of credit so they took the car back. A family member was a used car salesman and somehow was able to keep track of it and oddly enough it went up for auction in my own city instead of being shipped somewhere else and he let me know. I bought the car back at about 2k less than what was owed on the original loan at a lower interest rate. I still laugh at this. You'd say that after a year, maybe two they would find a way to change such a ridiculous rule. It's a feature, not a bug. Meaning it's an intended rule, effect and they have no intention of changing it. But it's silly, at best, that they are logging a dead man's account in the negatives and spending money on having call center reps call the woman that wants to close the account but can't. Some upper manager gets annual bonuses based on number of accounts and retention. There's your incentive. Not to mention for every Frankie, there are three little old ladies who will keep paying in fear and a lack of understanding. Years ago I was the executor of an elderly relative's estate. In the process of winding up her affairs, the mailing address on her various accounts was briefly changed to my address until her accounts could be closed. Ten years after my elderly relative died, a letter from her former bank addressed to her arrived at my address. It was a notice that she had attempted to overdraw her, long closed, account by attempting to use her, non-existent debit card to withdraw money at an ATM. The bank could not allow this, the letter said, and would she please call them to discuss the matter. The bank employee I called the next morning, believe it or not, was actually polite and apologetic about their major error. I'm guessing this was not Wells Fargo. No. Actually it was a very small bank in a very small town in another state. Odd fact about that bank. I only know this because I happened to be visiting that relative years ago and read her local newspaper one day. That small town bank still existed and had not been swallowed up by a bigger bank because the small bank's stockholders voted against being bought out by a bigger bank. The newspaper article suggested that that was very unusual and also suggested it saved several jobs in the small town because presumably a bigger bank would take over all the back office operations and eliminate those jobs. Mom passed away three years ago and I went through this. Same thing, will, death certificate, etc. It had just happened a day or two earlier, I was not in the mood to suffer the bank manager at Wells. I still remember his great compassion, nah. Fortunately it was only $500 and she had one of her friends on the account, so she closed it the next day. Advice. Put a transfer on death on your home, accounts, etc. I've done that for my Don. Absolutely bulletproof transfer to your heirs, no probate, it's immediate. I'm 63, have cancer, I could die tonight and my son can take over the house, every account, utilities, he lives with me. Don't put your loved ones in this predicament. Wow, I hope you kick cancer's ass and your son doesn't need to do that for long time. You're very kind, thanks had the same troubles when my mom died. Electric company was cool. Phone and gas wouldn't let me shut off the service. I told them she was dead and I had a certified death cert to prove it but nope. So I just didn't pay anymore. Legally not my problem. They'd call and write and I ignored them after I'd respond with a call saying she's dead and too bad for you. Collection agencies got pushy and they were also told to piss off. Lucky she banked where I did and they were great about letting me close her accounts. I inherited my dad's house and moved in. The internet wanted me to go in person to transfer service to my own name, I couldn't just do a hostile takeover and set up the internet in my own name at the house. Internet is still in his name. It's a monopoly in this area, or I would have just set up service with a different provider and cancelled the service that came with the house. I have access to his online portal, so I added myself as an admin and changed the passcode. Everything else was pretty easy to move into my name other than the emotional slog of needing to change it over to myself. 
Do you live in the USA? I have two laws for you. First one is, a bank fee cannot be the reason a bank account goes negative. A bank fee can take you to zero, not negative. However, once it is negative, they can make it go further negative. That very first bank fee that took it negative was illegal. Wells Fargo tried that crap with me and a lawyer took my case for free, because he said all he had to do was print up one paper and sign it, that I could pay for the stamp if I wanted because that's all it cost him. Wells Fargo knew they were breaking the law and dropped my case instantly when I got a lawyer. The second one is, debtor's privacy laws. A debt collector cannot tell a person that another person has a debt. It's a federal crime to do so. Get a call recorder and inform the debt collector that you are recording the call. Let them say, Bob owes us money, on the recording and bam interrupt them and inform them they just broke federal law, you are not Bob, and you are sending this recording to the FTC. You'll never hear from them again. I work in a busy retail deli we go through a lot of various cold cuts daily. Nothing ever gets old. Some of the slower selling pieces might take two to three days before we have to open a new one but even that's pretty rare. Well within the time frame of perfectly fresh, nowhere near going bad or out of code. I absolutely love when we're down to less than a quarter of the current ham or turkey we're cutting through. In that quarter there's at least a pound and a half to a pound and a quarter of slicing meat, where the slices are still together and not really small. Customer. I'd like half a pound of turkey, me. Goes and grabs it it puts in on the slicer customer. Oh is that the end? I don't want it if it's the end. The slices are smaller, me. It's close but I definitely have a half pound here, we sell a lot so it's always fresh. The slices will still be good sized. Customer. No, I want a new one opened. That's the end, it's old, it's no issue to open a new one for me. Eventually we're gonna have to do it anyway. But when I get a customer like this it's always particularly a fun moment. Me. Sure no problem, let me grab one off the wall and open it for you. At this point some get smug and think they've won. When we open a new product, we take the actual end off. It's usually an eighth to a quarter inch slice, so the slices aren't small and we don't end up slicing our arm off to get to the desired weight with small slices, but we're only obligated to take just the end off. We can just barely open the slicer, cut the end off, and we're good to go. Me. Dropping the new product on the slicer. Making one slice, I'll show you I'm cutting off the end, holds it up and shows the customer and then puts in in our ends bucket. We sell the ends at a steep discount, customer. Thank you. Was that so hard? Me. Cutting exactly one more slice to show the customer for the thickness of the cut, it's about the size of the circumference of a golf ball. Much much smaller than the previous piece before I opened the new one. Customer. Oh that's so small. Can you cut more off so it's a bigger slice? Me. No ma'am this is brand new, you saw me open it, that would be wasteful. I've just opened this new one for you and that's how it is when you open a new one. The first half a pound or so after the actual end is small. Customer. Can I have the other one you were going to cut? Realizing the other slices would have been bigger. Depending on the situation and if they've realized they've fucked up and are being a pain in the ass because with a new one opened, they're still starting at the end, I may go back to the other one. Sometimes it ends up being a pleasant conversation, sorry about that, it didn't really occur to me, I'd just be starting at the end. Or something along those lines. No problem then, I'll go to the other one and complete the order, both customer understanding and myself happy to have made them understand the situation. This lady however was kind of a cunt and in this particular situation another coworker had already grabbed that other piece to slice for another customer. Me. No ma'am, another coworker is cutting that for a customer, do you still want a half pound? This one is very fresh, I just opened it. Customer. No, I guess not. As she walks away in a huff. Me as she's still within earshot. You could come back in 15 minutes and wait in line again, the one that I just opened will probably be towards the middle. Customer just keeps walking, sometimes they go and complain, but every time when I explain exactly what I did to the manager who comes and asks about it, they see I did exactly what I was supposed to and the manager just laughs it off. I guess that's the end of that customer, was probably my favorite manager's response. I don't understand the customer, like if they are going to make a sandwich with the meat, it is still the same weight, so if they are smaller bits don't you just put two bits on the SW instead of one? Believe me we've tried to rationalize customers like this and you just can't but because yes you're still putting the same amount of meat on a sandwich you just have to spread it out a little more. 
A quarter pound of meat on a sandwich is a quarter pound. And if you build the sandwich evenly you can't tell what size the slices were. And if you make your SW for someone else, what kind of peanut is going to open the SW and complain that it's not one bit of meat? Hope the idiots that pull this shit read this. Different idiot here, I just gotta say your first post was the first time I've seen sandwich abbreviated like that. Then you did it twice in the next comment. Wow, thanks. If they want the slices all the same size they should buy pre-sliced. But oh no, that isn't fresh. Just how long did all that stuff sit around wrapped in plastic? The customer has no clue. Yep, and I even tell them it gets sliced daily by our night crew. Meat gets 5 days, cheese 10 so just reference the dates. You'll find nothing more than a day old in our Delhi Express section. Well how do I know you not just making that up? Uh, because I work here and we stay in business by selling old cold cuts and this is the first time ever we put fresh out. S like give me a break. I mean, half a pound of big slices is a hell of a lot more meat than half a pound of small slices. That's just math, S. Q the A and W one third pounder getting out competed by the McD's one quarter pounder because it's bigger. It's not a A one half pounder, it's a double one quarter pounder. My late son worked in the deli at a local market. The fun tales of customers he would sometimes tell. Towards Christmas one year, they were running a special on prime rib. I don't understand why, but they can only cut odd numbers of ribs, usually either three or five. They had a customer come in who wanted two ribs. Several minutes of back and forth about the number, they finally settle on three. They then want them to trim all the fat off of it, including in the meat itself. They try to explain that the fat is where the flavor comes from and if they try to cut it out, it will ruin the meat. Customer is still confused and disgruntled, but finally takes it. One of the deli people watch her as she goes through the store finishing her shopping. She checks out, no meat package. He found it stuffed behind some canned goods in an aisle. I know I have a couple recipes somewhere that use deli meats and in those recipes the meat has to be fairly large and uniform or it doesn't work, but in that case I am always extra super duper nice to the deli workers, instead of just normal nice. People are way more likely to help you if you're nice and explain what you need. She deserved everything she didn't get. Plus, you never want to piss off the people who are handling your food. That's true, and I get what you're saying. If someone comes to the counter and is like, I need slices to roll, or whatever as long as they're pleasant I'll make it happen. But also, no matter how shitty some people are, there's not a chance I'm messing with anyone's food. I need my job lol, and mostly I don't hate it. Lucky they didn't ask you to cut it in half so they could have slices from the middle. We will only do that for roast beef. We can and do say no to anything else. Why is roast beef special? Because sometimes roast beef are huge. Also if we cut it from one end it's often not as rare as the middle. So we cut them in half to show just how rare it is. My local butcher cuts the last bit into two or three nice thick ham steaks for my breakfast and throws it in for free. I think it's because I never bitch about anything. I wish local butchers were still a thing around here. I can think of maybe two within 50 miles of where I'm at. Why are you surprised she didn't buy any ham? If the first end was too small for her liking of course she doesn't want the smaller new ham. While it doesn't make sense to worry so much over the size of the slice, unless she was cooking something that required specific ham sizes, who knows what she wanted it for, it makes perfect sense that she wouldn't want any of your ham. You missed the point here. She thought she was being smart, and that the other piece was old, and that she wanted a new one. So when I opened a new one she failed to consider the slices would still be an end and small until she saw it with her own eyes. Only then, suddenly the other piece was actually fine and preferable and she missed out by being a pain in the ass. But if the freshness was her sole concern, she'd have taken the new ham. Since she would rather go without than have the new small slices that indicates the size was also pretty important, even if she's being a dick about it. If size wasn't that important small slices would be better than no ham at all. I got exposed to COVID. Just wear gloves. This was last summer when I was an assistant manager at Drama Nose. My state was one of the worst ones to live in during the pandemic. We were one of the ones who didn't completely shut down. We had a curfew, but hardly anyone enforced it. My youngest child's father and I have a 50-50 custody agreement where we basically alternate having her 3-4 to four days a week every week. 
I'll have her the first half, he the latter half. Now, this was a Wednesday and I would go drop my daughter off at her paternal grandma's house. When I got there, her dad was there, and I was met with a blunt, so we've been exposed to COVID, as I let two-year-old run in. No text message, no call, nothing to tell me ahead of time to tell me to not bring my child over. I asked how, and apparently, he and his mom had a lady who lived down the street that they would help out. She had a medley of health problems, and I guess she was too ashamed to tell them she tested positive. I don't care, no excuse to put people in danger. I freaked out, like, why would you tell me 15 minutes before I have to go to work? They kinda just shrugged and didn't say anything. I don't like arguing with these people, you can't fix stupid sometimes. I decided to leave our daughter there since, if anything were to happen, they lived 5 minutes from the hospital, whereas I lived in the neighboring town that had no big hospital. I got in my car and called my GM. Now, for a little backstory, my GM is an absolute piece of work. He's a nice dude, but he absolutely sees his job as a title and a perk as opposed to being a responsibility. He's a year younger than me, can't manage his finances, and has a knack for nepotism. That being said, I was his friend before getting hired, but he wasn't the GM at the time of my hiring. I actually almost didn't get hired because of that, but I proved myself, and the old GM and I are still really good friends. In the last year, he had hired his mom, his girlfriend, his baby mama, and his best friend. All of which lived in the same house. We also moved to a new location, which was nice, but also stressful. He and his girlfriend welcomed her first, his second child, a son, that February, and he had a five-year-old with his baby mama, who he made his other assistant manager. In her defense, she used to be the GM of Taco Bell but quit and came to Drama Nose, so she did have some experience, not that she gave a shit. Nor did he, he was the type of manager who was friends with everyone, but if it came down to confrontation, he absolutely couldn't do it. If drivers started throwing cussing tantrums in front of customers, instead of writing them up and sending them home, he'd scream and cuss back. He had no issue nitpicking me for stupid shit like leaving half full pans in the cooler. Like you're supposed to, just because he didn't want to make extra trips to fill things in the morning. Which is literally his job. Now that we've laid the scene of where I worked and who I worked with, I give him a call to explain what literally just happened. Hey, GM, I just found out that I may have been exposed to COVID in the last 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. I wait, um, dot wow. Okay, uh, you'll have to call, baby mama, and see if she can take your shift. Me, rolling my eyes knowing damn well she's lazy and plays the pregnancy card. Oh yeah, she is also pregnant with her boyfriend's baby, who also lives with them. Meaning their five-year-old got two new siblings in the same year. Okay, I'll let you know, I call her, she doesn't answer, I call her on messenger, she answers and hangs up. I message her and tell her it's me. She calls, I answer, I explain. When I say, would you be able to cover for me? Click, really? Now I'm mad. You can just say no instead of playing phone tag with me. I message the GM and head home. He tells me, well, if she can't come in, you have to work. Are you fucking joking right now? I have to go get tested. Do you feel any symptoms? It literally just happened and you can be asymptomatic. Yeah, but, you're an essential employee. You can work during COVID. At this point, my professionalism went completely out the door. Again, I couldn't believe how stupid people can be. A. I've never received any form of documents stating I'm essential. Even though I'm a food worker, I call bullshit. B. Even if I am, that doesn't mean you work with COVID, you idiot. I can get everyone else sick. What will you do if everyone comes down with COVID because you made me come to work? Again, this was all over messenger, so I couldn't hear his tone, but I could sense the smugness. If it happens, we'll figure it out. Be on oven. Just wear a mask and gloves and try to stay six feet away from everyone. I'm livid now. Being on oven means cutting the food, not putting it in a 350 degrees oven to kill germs. And the oven is three feet away from the computer drivers need to sign in and out on. Also, the heat rack is right next to the cutting table. There is no possible way that his logic will work. Well, as said, he also hired his girlfriend, who had just had a baby five months prior. I also had a few other employees who had elderly parents and children, who took the pandemic as seriously as I did. Q malicious compliance. The people I mentioned were all on shift that night. 
So I went. I put on a mask and some vinyl gloves I had at home, opened the back door, knowing people would come to me, since I was in charge. I find out GM had left before I even let him know the status of his baby mama. He literally left because he didn't want me to confront him to his face. Which was fine, his girlfriend was on her way in. The first one that walked toward me was a driver who never keeps his mouth shut. Perfect for my plan. Stay away, I've been exposed. His eyes widen, and he immediately turns and walks the other way. I stay in the back, in the office, and wait for everyone else to come back, especially after being told what I said. My closest friend there comes to the back, looking puzzled. I tell her bluntly what happened, and showed her, from afar, the exchange between GM and me. I was in tears because I knew how mad everyone would be for me showing up, but I was making a point. She immediately told me to hang on, and called GM's girlfriend, who was pulling in at the time. Again, she had a brand new baby. When she was told, she was even more furious than me. GM came home and didn't even bother telling her or giving her a heads up. So she called him and cussed him out. I, being the one in charge, asked them, what do you want me to do? Go home. We've got this. Sorry GM made you come in. No, I'm sorry for coming in and putting you at risk, but he literally told me to. I was gone for a week, negative test, and everyone was angry with GM. He never owned up to it or apologized, and I was out of line for coming in in the first place and risking everyone, but goddamn, why are people in authority positions so ignorant to common sense? Edit. Since there's some misunderstanding, after I left, I self-isolated for about a week, then got tested. I didn't just immediately go and get tested. I waited to see if I got symptoms, and then got tested to make extra sure. This was also July of 2020, and I worked 50 hours a week, so I wasn't entirely informed on how to react. I was panicked, since I have a crappy immune system. Since I read a few other comments where you had said you reported this GM to higher ups and nothing came of it, did you consider reporting him to the CDC? He could have faced legal action for knowingly exposing his entire store and customer basis to COVID when you were trying to do what was required of you to properly contain things. I never thought to go that far because it was resolved when the rest of the employees stood up to him about it. Had it happened again, yeah, I probably would have fought harder, but since the crew was basically ready to walk out on him for it, the lesson was learned. When this happened to me my site manager went fucking apeshit. All I did was say I may have been exposed, and he flipped his shit wondering why I was bothering him with this unless I was in the hospital. At that point I knew my company didn't actually give one single shit about our safety and noped the fuck out. Fuck em. Folks were already getting sick and the girl I was working next to was bad sick. I heard her calling someone while I was fixing her machine and she was talking about the same symptom I currently had, after working in her station a couple days prior, which was listed as an exposure symptom in China. This of course occurring a week after we got an airlifted shipment of stuff from there at the height of their first wave. Most of my shift's co-workers were over 60, and one of them with bad lungs who would definitely have died if he got it bad. I wasn't going to have that on my conscience so I had to do the right thing and blow the whistle. I got a target put on my back and that job wasn't worth the pay much less being a target for nearly causing an international incident. I was told by a random person who I hadn't talked to telling me that people were looking for me, suggesting someone broke HIPAA after I got tested for strep flu because they were the only others who knew. My job and my doctor had my contact info. To this day I still have no idea how that person knew about it and why whoever was looking for me didn't have my info. All the more reason to have left and never look back. Edit. And yay, I did have it too. A month later the state recorded its first official case. There were no tests, you had to be deathly ill before you could get it. Recently I remember a friend telling me about one of his friends getting sick with a cold, and then the skin on his hands and feet sloughing off. Didn't put two and two together until recently. Lots of people were sick and everyone was too afraid and too Republican to do anything about it. About a week after the mask rules were lifted here in the UK, I was talking to one of the managers at work and they happened to mention offhand, oh, and, co-worker, has tested positive for COVID so she can't come in for a while, I was gobsmacked cause me and one other person had both literally just worked a 9-hour shift with that co-worker two days prior. I asked shouldn't I be self-isolating too instead of working a shift? Shouldn't everyone on that shift be isolating? And the boss basically shrugged and said, get a test if you're worried. Luckily I tested negative but I am absolutely baffled that no one did anything at all to protect our customers, 
many of which are elderly folk who aren't in the best of health to begin with. Did your ex and your daughter end up fine too? Yeah, they didn't come down with it either, thankfully. Unfortunately, the neighbor they were helping did pass away though. If it makes you feel better. The local retail pharmacy has a policy of if you're exposed you go get a PCR test, the ones that take two to three days for results, and then continue working until you get a positive result. It's not just food places pulling bullshit, I'm just glad you tested negative and hopefully your child was as well. Nice, you have made it to the end already. Thank you for watching. If you aren't already subscribed, please do so, as there will be more videos like this in the near future.